not a lot has been good about this pandemic, but it has led to some creative thinking about how to do things differently. The Art Gallery of Ontario, for one, saw an opportunity to bring its art education programs to nearly every part of the province. With us to explain, in Coburg, Ontario, Jocelyn Chapman, who teaches a split grade of five and six in the Kawartha Pine Ridge District School Board. And in Ajax, Zavet Quadros Evangelista, Associate Curator for School Programs and Early Learning at the AGO. Hi to you both. Hello, thanks uh, for having hi. me. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, Zavet, I wanted to turn to you first. How did the AGO manage to there's, there's only one word that I can use in this situation, but how did the AGO manage to pivot once it was shut down during the pandemic? Yeah, when in uh, in March of you know 2020, when the gallery closed, um, and we realized that virtual field trips or just field trips in general were not actually going to happen, uh, the gallery quickly decided to develop some strategies on what this outreach would look like and making art accessible uh, through arts education um, is at the core of uh, the AGO's mission. So what we did was, you know, in a typical year, we would see around 35,000 students who would make their way on site. And because we knew that this wasn't going to happen, um, what we did was kind of thought about what are ways in which we would be able to engage with our audiences, these 35,000 students now, you know, who would not be able to come into the building itself. Um, we had some experience in um, experimenting with virtual programming prior to prior to this um, mass pandemic. In what capacity? Um, and in with our particular partnership with Connected North. Mm -hmm. uh, so with Connected North, we were delivering art instruction uh, to rural communities um, in the North and through a two-way technology that Cisco provided. So we use some of the learnings from that experience and kind of work to build new content, work to build kind of a new platform in order to be able to deliver a virtual session. And I think with the adaption and the adoption of Zoom kind of by everyone, it seemed um, like the most simplest way that we were able to share what we were doing in the gallery with everyone. Um, some people, kind of, you know, some, some kids might not be able to come to the AGO because it is cost prohibitive or maybe they don't live mm -hmm. um, near uh, the AGO. Doing it this way online, how many kids are you able to reach? So in the in our last kind of year, when we launched in October all the way through to June, we reached over 755,000 students. Wow. So this included students and parents and teachers and homeschoolers, really the entire gamut of uh, visitors who would come um, come to our building were now joining us on site. And oh, jo joining us online. And Jocelyn, it is your uh, responsibility as a teacher to kind of translate or manage. You know, when my kids were doing the online learning at the beginning, um, all the kids' voices talking at the same time. There's a lot happening, right? Um, so how difficult was it to teach art virtually? Um, I think it was difficult. Uh, it was hard, hard to guide the children. So oftentimes when we're in a classroom together, we can see step by step, we can see what they're doing. So I think that was one of the hardest things. Um, it was also hard because we kind of lost some of our experts. Like when, if we took a field trip to the AGO, we know we can rely on the experts. Um, so having a virtual session, I know that teachers that I spoke to myself for sure, having that chance to just know that you were getting quality education made a huge difference. It made it a lot easier. In what um, ways? To have a voice. Just knowing that if we were going to pre be presented with a painting, that the history of the painting was going to be accurate, the um, composition, we were going to get an idea of how it was made, when it was made. And it saved, like the teachers were kind of transferring all everything we'd ever done to online. That was a lot of work. Mm. So the idea that we didn't have to do this research about art, which is very important, um, just kind of made it like, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put art at the forefront because somebody's doing the research for me. This is pre-made. I can, I can access this. Zavet, who teaches these classes? 
So these uh, classes are taught by our uh, art educators in our gallery. We have about um, about 13 art educators, um, and again, they are you know they're professional, they're teachers, they're educators, they're kind of thinkers and Afrofuturists, and they all come together, bringing their passion to what we do with bringing the arts um, and this curriculum to students and teachers. Um, each of our art educators as well kind of really thoughtfully uh, thinks through kind of our topics that we've created um, and share these out with our um, with our students. Um, it's been quite a challenge as well for our art educators to be able to um, to be able to deliver kind of a program online when they're so used to being surrounded by students and you know having that moment to scaffold, questions and responses, but everyone has done such an amazing job kind of embracing this new technology um, and being able to engage in this virtual way through Zoom, through this platform that's made available. So that's kind of something that's really nice and really special. Um, and we're so uh, we're so proud of our uh, of our amazing team. Now, the logistics of it, now we're at home and the kids can access it if they're in their classroom virtually. Um, Jocelyn, before, um, would a class trip to the AGO have been possible for your students? I think uh, classes from our school have gone to the AGO before, but um, the classroom I have, I'm going to say it would not have been accessible. Sometimes the gas money alone to take a bus into the city is prohibitive. Pr prohibit prohibitive for families. Um, so just taking the gas out of the equation made it a lot more accessible. Kids get excited when I have the AGO field, I put it as an AGO field trip on the blackboard on our schedule and they come in and they read the schedule and they're like, oh, it's a field trip day. So it just opens the world up to them some more. Yeah, it's my my daughter's favorite. Uh, every every time they do uh, a, a trip to the AGO, she's so excited about it. We're going to the museum, we're going to the art gallery. Um, and Jocelyn, I wanna come back to you. What has the virtual art program meant for you and your students? I think it's really invaluable. Uh, our school board, all of Canada, I hope, has a really big focus on reconciliation. And one of the calls to action is through education. Mm -hmm. And the AGO, I believe it's every Tuesday, their art focus is Indigenous Voices. And that's how I got started with the virtual field trips. I thought this is a reliable source. These are owned voices. So really, it's been invaluable. It's art. It's um, reconciliation, it's engaging for the students. They do um, like a program and then they offer a mini art activity at the end. So the kids get to react to the artwork too, which is half of the art curriculum. So it's very important, very valuable. Zavet, how does this program work? Oh, I'm so excited to explain this. And it's exactly as uh, Jocelyn kind of mentioned. So we have 30 minute sessions um, where an art educator will deliver a program. So they'll select two works of art from the collection. Uh, and within 30 minutes, we go through the critical analysis process as outlined in the curriculum. But we're really trying to make this fun for students who are joining us. Um, so there's a little bit of art exploration, um, a little mini art making activity. And because wellness has been such a huge component uh, for us in this past year and particularly for our students as well we include a wellness moment just a minute to pause and to think about where you are what it is that you are doing um, and in our sessions as well we invite participants to use with just a pencil and a piece of paper and come in and you know respond to the works of art a really fun moment for us is actually that live component, that live engagement, where an art educator will ask a question and then in our Q&A section, we'll get all these responses from students from wherever they are uh, across the board. So, you know, if you're in Deep Scarborough or in, in Etobicoke, or if you're out in Chatham, for example, you're all kind of responding to this collective question that has been asked. And so building the sense of community in this really quick 30 minute moment in a virtual space is really something that's special. It's kind of magical in a sense because you're connecting so many people from so many different parts of the provinces, their different perspectives, experiences, and then they're coming together to, to enjoy uh, something we all really uh, are privileged to experience. Uh, Jocelyn, how has it been received on your end? Well, my students get excited, like I said. It's like, oh, field trip day, we're going on a field trip. 
They always want to know more about the artist. They love the actual presenters at the AGO. Uh, they, you can just tell the respect right away. So there's 25 kids in the class and they're all listening. I would say one of the favorite parts is that interactive piece. So I have one device and the students will give me answers and then I'll type them in the device. And if the presenter um says oh mrs chapman's class says this then they'll say it in the presentation and my kids are just like yes we got on like they think they're kind of famous we got on the presentation <laughs> so like it's just a hundred percent engagement it's and it's good quality uh let's take a look at what a virtual session looks like sheldon please roll so that's what i'm saying you see that that even though this kid is in this modern kitchen they're still connected to their um, Inuit culture in that toy, which is obviously not modern, but traditional, right? So our mini art activity, of course, has to do with food, my favorite dish. So if you decide to create your favorite dish, make sure you hashtag AGO schools uh, Zavet, let's uh, let's talk about what we just saw. Uh, the artwork is by Annie Putukuk, and it's called "Licking the Plate Clean." Uh, can you tell us more about the artist? Yes, of course. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, our art educator Malaika Wairi kind of really sets the stage up um, for getting into this conversation with our students about Annie Putuguk. Uh, and at the beginning of her session, she invites uh, participants to actually share uh, where they are from, and that really kind of centers um, the conversation about Annie Putuguk. Um, so Annie Putuguk is an Inuk artist um, and one of the pioneers of a new style of art that actually came in from King and from Kingite Studios. Um, Annie Putuguk hails from an artist, uh, from a family of artists. So there's draftswomen and printmakers and, um, and stone carvers. But unlike her predecessors, um, who depict hunting scenes and kind of this, um, this pristine north, um, they're depicting their realities. For Annie Putuguk, her drawings represent her everyday life. And so a life where tradition comes up alongside the impacts of modernity um, and mass consumerism. So in this color pencil piece, Malaika is just sharing with the students, you know, there's accoutrements of a kitchen. So whether you are across the province, if you're here in the city, you might recognize these elements of what's in your kitchen. So there's a little cup in the back and a little kettle that's kind of brewing on the side. So again, inviting students that, you know, Annie Putuguk is all the way in King It, but you in your kitchen, what does your space look like? You know, and what does she have on that plate um, that the, the person who's sitting on the floor on the plate, what are they possibly looking? What was so delicious on that plate? And then invite students to think about what would they fill on their plate if, you know, that they would like, that would be just so delicious. Uh, and Zavet, you know, I, I'm trying, I've, I'm trying to remember the last time that I had a, a dish so good <laughs> that I was licking the plate, but it's such a nice feeling. Um, the AGO has a lot of amazing art from Indigenous artists. Um, when you showcase it, you try to follow art themes. Absolutely. So our sessions every day are actually thematic. Um, so the sessions that Jocelyn tunes into um, this year, they are every Tuesday. We focus on Indigenous art and artists, but we also offer sessions on um, spotlighting uh, BIPOC artists um, in art of Africa and the African diaspora. We have art and the senses. Um, we also have included this year an art making kind of 101 really for teachers and students to come in and have this moment where you're looking at technical um, aspects of art making through line and color and texture and space. Um, and then we also include our partnership program. So every Thursday, uh, we partner with cultural institutions. Um, last year, we partnered with um, the National Ballet of Canada and the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, and then cultural institutions in Hong Kong um, and the US as well. So really to have this holistic view of what art is and the possibilities um, of art through cross-curricular connections. Well, we're gonna look at some art now. Um, Jocelyn, you and Zavet shared the art from your class after this Zoom class. Um, tell us about these drawings and what happens <laughs> on your end, Jocelyn. 
Um, so this, oh, I just love this picture because uh, this was after the licking the plate clean. So it, I love that all the kids need is a piece of paper and a pencil. So again, just the accessibility piece. Um, and then they were invited to draw their favorite dish, a dish that would make them lick the plate. So we had a big conversation about this one because that is steak and tacos. So just like the glory <laughs> it's of balanced. that meal. Absolutely. Um, there is the little motivation piece too, because I'm always like, oh, if we get these done, if you want me to um, tweet them, I can tweet them out to the AGO. And if the AGO ever responds, then I read that to the class. So it's not something that they create and then it just sits there or it gets shoved in their backpack. It kind of they like the idea that it kind of goes to the world a little bit. Um, I think this one had bacon on it. I'm actually vegan. So anytime the kids can throw in something with bacon, they do. <laughs> they can't believe it. Uh, but who doesn't love bacon? And then another oh, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So uh, this child interpreted it a little different, the art activity. <laughs> and this is his version of licking that plate clean. And I just, this, he is a comic drawer, very talented. This one was from um, a different session. It was a machine one. So this was art and the senses. And this was a creation. We got to create a machine. Mm -hmm. And the activity for this one was to kind of do the, the movement and the feeling of a machine so that the kids enjoyed that one. It was a little bit more abstract. So we had a discussion about what abstract is versus kind of realism. And it was, it, they're rich activities. Sometimes we take five minutes, sometimes we take 20, 25, whatever the kids want to do with it. I love the shading of that. Um, <laughs> Zavet, uh, Jocelyn mentioned that the art is uh, showcased um, and shared. How important is that for children when they are learning how to be creative? It is absolutely important. And I think, you know, even at the beginning of sessions, we really do try to uh, make sure that we call out students. So particularly if schools kind of pop their names in their classrooms, it's so nice to actually hear from Jocelyn and teachers. You know, they'll send us a note saying, thank you for calling my classroom out and for my school out. Because even though in sessions, you know, there could be thousands of students uh, tuning into one session, just being able to acknowledge that folks have actually taking the time out of their day to come in, sit down, tune in is, is so important. Um, we collect all of our artworks and so we put the hashtag AGO schools and at the end of every session we're able just to see the plethora of responses that come in from sessions that happen throughout the week. Uh, and it's a nice reminder of, of what it is we're doing and the impact that it has on, um, on our communities and on our schools and teachers and parents and caregivers and everyone who kind of tunes in. And Jocelyn, I know some kids can be um, shy in a classroom setting, or they might not think they're as great of an artist as the students sitting next to them. But do you find that doing art this way is may maybe uh, allowing some of them to come out of their shells and to become more creative? I think so. I, I actually like the idea that they're called mini art activities. I think that in itself takes some of that daunty. No, that's not a word. I think that I think the fact that they're called mini art activities uh, makes it easier for some kids to engage that don't think they're capable of doing a professional artwork. And then the fact that we're sharing these like it, they're they're their work and it's worth sharing kind of builds their confidence. So I don't have any kids that say, I can't do this. They all want to try. They all want to get on Twitter and they, they're proud of themselves when they do see what they create. It's really nice that the, uh, the process uh, focus as well, right? Like it's nice when students, like there's no pressure on them to create something that's a product at the end. Yeah. It's really, it's like, what are you thinking about? Like, yeah. how are you putting what you were thinking about onto this kind of piece? And um, it's really nice, Jocelyn, that she, I love how the words are misspelled. Like I love how spaghetti is spelled and how sushi is spelled because it's really, you're like, yeah, this is the gist of, you know, here's something that you need to do Kind of you just put your thoughts down and that's the first thing that kind of comes to mind. I know online, uh, online school hasn't been the greatest thing invented, uh, but do you find that this is maybe a positive side to learning online, virtually? 
I think for sure it has been. I love that uh, there's a variety of topics to choose from. I love that even when we were back in the classroom, it was still offered. It just is that professional piece, like professionals delivering a program and making it accessible for anybody. It's, it's definitely been a silver lining. And do you mark the kids on the art? It depends on most of the time, no. I was just saying like if there, we haven't done, if there was one that focused on something we had been talking about, there's a chance that I might accept, um, I might mark them on it. But most of the time it's the experience, it's their connection to the artwork, it's listening to the critical analysis that's given of the artwork. So mostly it's just an enjoyable experience uh, getting to know art more. And Zavet, uh, what can teachers do if they're interested in bringing their classes in, so to speak? <laughs> we'll, we'll have our sessions kind of ready to go. We Our last session uh, will end for the winter term, but we will pick up again uh, on January the 11th and go all the way through to the end of June. Um, teachers can visit ago.ca, uh, learn and virtual school programs to see a schedule of programming that's on there and it's a quick registration link that they can uh, access. And as a curator, um, you know, I use that dreaded word pivot at the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> um, as a curator, what has it meant for you to be able to experience this with kids and to see that um, they can still access this art even though they're not there in person? I think this really is core to what the AGO kind of values in terms of accessibility. So it's really nice to actually hear Jocelyn, you know, share a little bit about her programming and the value that it has to classrooms, um, to her classroom. But also we hear that quite often that part of our community as well, just being able to have quality uh, art education delivered by kind of professional art educators who themselves are, you know, poets and teachers and storytellers and kind of really passionate about the work that they do. Um, and this is a really nice tie-in to kind of bring it all together. And what I've learned is that, you know, no one is ever tired of like seeing and talking and hearing and sharing art. So I think that will kind of continue uh, whether we are on site and whether we continue online. Um, and are there similar programs or activities families can enjoy together? Absolutely. Um, since the start of the pandemic, the AGO has kind of gone full virtual. So all our online talks, uh, youth programs, uh, art courses, online family programs, um, everything you'll find on AGO.ca. And so a lot of the programs will commence um, in January um, of 2022. Um, Jocelyn and Zavet, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us. And also for all the work that you're doing, I, it hasn't been a great uh, time for a lot of people, for all of us, but I think when you're teaching children um, and trying to fill in the gaps, I think it's even been more challenging. So we really do thank you for everything that you've been doing. Uh, really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.